Welcome back. I hope everyone is doing alright out there. As you can see, my hair and beard are getting long from this self-isolation, but I hope you're surviving it. In this video, we're going to extend that polymer script that we worked on in the last video. Last time we made it go in a very straight and short line. This time we're going to try to make it squiggle through space. Um, so we'll look at how to do that, and without further ado, let's get right to it. Okay, so the first thing we'll do is actually rename the comment here at the top just to indicate that we're going to create a polymer chain. It's actually winding through space this time, so it'll be a little bit more interesting than uh, the previous polymer. I've also changed a couple things throughout this file just to make the potential more accurate. I've updated the bond lengths uh, to the right carbon for a polyethylene chain. Uh, we've also, we also need to add in another angle type to represent the hydrogen-carbon-hydrogen -hydrogen bonds. So now we have two bond types, carbon-carbon and carbon-hydrogen, and we also have two angle types, carbon-carbon-carbon and hydrogen-carbon-hydrogen. -hydrogen. Um, otherwise, uh, most of this is going to be the same. Um, we're going to take a look at this idea of the chain vector. Um, we have an initial direction, but we need to define a way um, to you know, change that uh, chain vector in a more random way. So we're going to define this function called perturbate, and we're going to give it a vector, and we're going to change that vector by some, you know, small angle, essentially. There are many ways you could do this. Um, the first way that came to my mind was to use a quaternion and pick a random axis and a small angle and um, use a quaternion that way. So we'll pick a random angle. Um, I'm actually going to include a couple modules here to help us out. Um, specifically distributions and quaternions. Distributions will help us with some other distributions other than uniform random. So we'll pick an angle out of a normal distribution instead and we'll set a standard deviation such that uh, within three standard deviations everything is within 15 degrees. So I'm making sure that it's a pretty small angle essentially. So uh, we're also going to need for a quaternion we're going to need to define a a random axis and we're gonna for uh, to try to make this a little bit uniform we're going to generate a random unit vector and we're going to make that unit vector uh, uniformly distributed on the unit sphere so it's not as simple as just generating three numbers and making it a unit vector because in that case you have some points that are more likely to get chosen you can think of it with this image here if you generate uh, random points in order to get this unit vector, for example in two dimensions, if you generate two random points, you're going to generate a point in this outer square. If you normalize it to a unit vector, you're essentially projecting it onto this circle inside the square. Everything in the blue region will get mapped evenly to the uh, that line on the circle. Essentially there's the same number of points um, in your of your randomly generated points in the square. There's the same number of those points that get mapped to any given point on that circle. That's for the blue region. But the red region, those uh, those are extra regions essentially. The, that's where you're going to have these um, regions of of higher probability of points. So instead you need to go through this um, step of generating some angles and creating a, a vector from those angles as you can see that I've done here. So with that axis and angle we can create a quaternion and we can use that quaternion to, uh, to rotate our vector that we've been given. So we just need to turn that vec tell that vector, turn that vector into a quaternion so that we can do the quaternion multiplication. And then when we uh, take that new quaternion, we just take the axis because it won't have an angle. But so we just turn return it as an axis because that'll be a vector again. Okay, so this defines the perturbate function, and before we leave it, we can actually define our angle range as a parameter as well, and that'll help us when we want to change that later. Next, we're going to want to, well, I've decided I want to put all of this generating of our CH2 groups into a function um, so that we can do this a little bit easier without having to write all these same 
you know, these same code snippets to create the CH2 vector uh, every single time. So essentially, we're just going to pull all of this code um, that we've generated for uh, creating our CH2 with the rotation matrices and all of that. We're going to put it all into this function so that when we call it, it'll just add on this new CH2 group uh, at whatever point that we tell it to. Along with that, we're going to kind of change how the indices work. Um, instead of incrementally updating our I index to indicate how many atoms have been created, we're going to take the length of the atoms vector that we're storing all of our atoms in at the beginning, and then we're going to just base everything off of that length. Um, that way, it'll be a little bit cleaner. We don't have to keep updating this thing, and we can just update it once per function. It just kind of reduces some of the lines. So once we've got that function, so it updates the atoms, the types, the angles, the dihedrals, the bonds, um, we can actually replace a whole bunch of code that's inside of our while loop with this function. So we can just replace it and add in the function. The one thing that we need, do need to decide um, before we can really call this function is where are we going to uh, create this new CH2 group. We can find that based on the previous atom and we can use the um, use the carbon carbon bond length, uh, the previous carbon rather, so it's not the previous, just the previous atom, two, two atoms ago. And we can use the carbon carbon bond length and the, the rotation matrix and whatever our chain vector is and we can create that new, um, essentially that new origin for the CH2 group. We think we're ready to go and get all excited about running this and realize we made a mistake. I made a mistake, rather. So obviously we need to handle the case of the first CH2 group where we don't have any previous atoms. So we'll, we'll initialize this new carbon point with the origin so that we'll always start at the origin. There's a couple other errors that I missed up here, mostly spelling. Um, but once we get through those errors, we can actually run it. Once we do that, we can take a look at the data file. It looks pretty much the same as it did before. Uh, there's one th thing that we need to change, actually, is that in this case, like I said, we're going to use um, we're going to use two angle types. So we need to make a slight tweak to the writing of that data file. Um, and then, as you can see, we're also missing carbon-carbon bonds in here, and that's simply because uh, I forgot to include them in the uh, in the CH2 in the creating the CH2 script. So, or function rather. So you can see in this first part where we create the carbons, we don't actually create a carbon bond. So we can just fix that up real quick, and create the carbon bonds whenever we create the carbon. Then you can see that we now have uh, we now have carbon bonds and we're right back to where we were at the end of the last video. So now we actually want to change the direction of our chain vector every time we create a group. So we're going to uh, just perturbate that vector and we'll use the default angle range for now which is 15 degrees. Uh, we're also going to get rid of this uh, end bond because it's not going to be periodic at this point. We run into a couple other errors at this point. First, the normal distribution needs to be qualified because a couple different modules use the name normal. Uh, also, the quaternions doesn't know how to convert a point type into a quaternion with zero angle. So we just turn that in, into an array, uh, which it does know how to convert. And then finally, uh, we used the axis as a variable when that's the name of the function that we need to use for quaternion to uh, convert the quaternion back into a point. So we just uh, need to we just need to rename that axis variable into something uh, better named. And this time you can see that it started to uh, move a little bit. It's starting to bend around. So uh, we can give this a little bit more room. It worked. So let's multiply the number of atoms by 10 and give it 10 times the room to work with. Well, a thousand times really. And then we can uh, take a look at it again and you can see it's very slowly uh, angling off into space. Of course from here we can look at the effect of the distribution and the different angle range. 
The ones on the top are from a uniform distribution, and you can see that they're a bit more erratic than the ones on the bottom, which are from a normal distribution. As you move from left to right, the angle range is greater, and you can tell by how much they're squiggling around. Of course, this isn't the end for creating polymer chains. If you're creating a structure for an actual simulation, you'll need to make sure that you have a uh, non-colliding walk so it doesn't wrap back on itself too much. Um, but you'd also want it to be a bit more um, compact too, potentially. And you'll want to create multiple chains as well so that they can bunch together. We may take a look at that in some future videos, but in the meantime, I hope this has been interesting for you. You may notice that I did things a little differently in this video. I'd love to hear your feedback on the different method of showing the code and of kind of speeding through some of that. Uh, sometimes that code can get a little bit uh, tedious to watch me type it, and certainly you can uh, understand it faster than I can type it. So let me know in the comments below how that went, and thanks for watching.